Yeah, I also played a bit of an R3 and it kind of mixed up. <laughs> Hello, hello there and welcome back to War Thunder. So, this is a very special video because on this day, 8 years ago, I created my War Thunder account. And the star of today's video is the Italian Premium Panzer 4 G, battle rating 4.0 and rank 3. The question is, is this a worthy premium or just a cheap reskinned asset flip that is completely pointless? To be honest, I really like the tank and what can you not love about a Panzer IV? The really good looking 3D model, the good gun, the decent mobility and the armor that once in a while lets you actually bounce a shot. And in this battle I also have activated a 200% silver line booster and you'll see my absolute uh, goal of today to fight around this church and I already saw some action going on so I hope that I can make it there because that is usually a very good spot in particular in this map iteration where there is only one capture zone and I can create a crossfire I can protect it and I can give my team an advantage while also farming nice kills with easy side shots at least that's the plan but no good plan ever has survived the contact with the enemy they say so we'll see how this turns out today. Again, binocular shooting and it works like a charm. Fantastic. Now, eight years ago, long-term viewers of my channel absolutely know where it uh, started, it, uh, who started it all. It was a certain gnome in a Catalina bombing on a certain arcade map, an airfield. And I was thinking to myself, hmm, that looks fun. I never would have guessed that 8 years later I end up here with a YouTube channel with 30,000 subscribers plus and also a monster PC, not the crappy little piece, um, you know, laptop that I started it with and can we do it? Yes, a flat 12,000 civil lines, fantastic, I'll take it, I really need it. <clears throat> so <laughs> the, the, it was a long road, it was a long way to where I am now and to be honest sometimes Sometimes you are so busy with your daily um, job and your daily existing that you forgot about what you have already achieved. And it's, it's absolutely fantastic um, what I learned, um, how much I learned about World War I, World War II, uh, post-World War II, Korea, etc, etc, to modern times, the mechanics, but also where War Thunder has gone from a game that started it all with just planes. We have for now not just tanks, but also ships and helicopters, the latter two being a bit of a disaster, but hey, they are here. Also, um, you know, now I am a YouTuber and I founded this YouTube channel making videos about War Thunder because of War Thunder, not because of the money. It's still more of a hobby and um, um, me being enthusiastic in my inner core. And whenever I rant whenever I am really not happy what uh, Gaijin does with War Thunder it's because of the passion that I have for this game for where it once was where it's going and you know what's not so good about it very often you forget about the good parts right and you just see the bad parts in your real life in you know your job and when you watch the news you know only bad news are good news they say but anyway, back to the Panzer IV. Let's go a bit over this tank spaces, because um, I could talk literally hours about you know the the people that I met on the internet, the the contacts and the projects, the corporations I did, and um, I think that's a, that's a good thing for another video if anybody's interested. Let's talk about the Panzer IV G. So first of all, this tank sits at battle rating 4.0. Whereas the German original one sits at 3.7. Why? Your guess is good as mine. But it doesn't really matter because the very best amongst the Panzer IVs will and always will be the Panzer IV F2 at 3.3. The end. <laughs> and uh, your gun isn't really that much better. But it's, uh, it's a good combination of mobility, 
protection and firepower. Let's start with the business end of the tank. Let's start with the gun. We have the 75mm KWK40 or Kampfwagenkanone L48 L48 with overall 87 rounds of ammunition. You never need this huge amount of ammunition, um, but you have it if you really need it. And then you have a really good reload of 5.9. Yes, the Shermans have 5 seconds and they have also a, a first plane stabilizer for lower speeds, which is an advantage, which you don't have. But in all honesty, the additional penetration and ammo selection that you have kind of make up for it. And this is where we come to the stock AP CBC round, the Panzergranate 39. 750 meters per second muscle velocity is far from you know what later German tanks have but it results in 140 millimeters of penetration at point blank range and even at a thousand meters it is 112 millimeters and you can punch even through the angled front plate of a T-34 unless you hit the driver's hatch so it's a really good shell you only have to go for pixel hunting on uh, special heavy tanks such as you know the KV-1 series. If they are angled, don't even try. However, if you really want to or need to punch through even more armor, you have the Panzergranate 40 APCR round. It has much less post penetration damage and it does even worse versus angled armor, but versus thick flat armor, this is where it's really good at. 930 meters per second muscle velocity lets you kind of snipe at longer ranges and you can punch through 166 millimeters of flat armor at a kilometer it goes down to 128 millimeters so the advantage versus the Panzergranate actually shrinks considerably then we have also versus um, lightly protected vehicles that need to be hull broken properly the whole Ladungsgranate 38B or the uh, heat round it has a very low muscle velocity of 450 meters per second but it punches through 80 millimeters uh, of armor at any ranges so that is then pretty good again versus SPA that uh, can be hull broken this is really good the Sprenggranate 43, the HG round, is not really anything spectacular. However, there is another shell type, the um, KGR Rot Nebel, and that is the uh, that is the smoke shell, 540 meters per second mass velocity. And since you have such a huge ammunition capacity, you can take this also with you to have a second smoke source next to your smoke grenades that you have as a one charge consumable which you can refill on the um on a capture circle so you have a lot of variety you have a lot of performance as well let's talk about the mobility so you have a 300 horsepower strong engine for this 23.6 ton tank which results in a top speed of 40 kilometers per hour and in reverse it's uh, still okayish i guess uh, with uh, seven and a half kilometers per hour in reverse this tank has no neutral steering um but you know that's the least of your concerns to be honest and to be honest i think that the um, horsepower to ton ratio with 12.7 for this battle rating is okay so you can go to places and you have a really good gun with also 10 degrees of gun depression and 20 degrees of gun elevation and the turret rotation speed is also quite good with a um what's what's it 14 degrees yes there are tanks that have better one with around 20 but it's still usable fantastic tank the armor protection is on the front up to uh, 50, um, 50 plus 30, so 80 millimeters. You have some slopes, but it's rather flat. It's add-on armor and the turret is only 50. Um, so the side is then also only 30, so even SPA can punch through it. It's not an armored behemoth like certain, um, certain well, to be honest, the T-34 and also the Sherman have better armor layout. Let's put it that way. But still, overall, a fantastic tank. And uh, the basic rule in War Thunder is who shoots first usually wins the fight to begin with. But you can work rich lines with it. You can engage uh, tanks at longer ranges than they can effectively engage you. And 
if you create crossfires with certain of your teammates with that rate of fire, that ammunition capacity, the penetration values, there is nothing wrong with it. And to be honest, nobody can really claim that this tank is overpowered either. Why? Because, yeah, it dies relatively quickly and the ammo racks are not done in such a way that the tank can absorb a shell. I mean, versus solid shot, yeah, you have five crew, but yeah, that's it. So that was the Panzer IV G, the Italian premium one, and that was a fantastic battle with nine kills, a premium account, the premium status of this vehicle, and a 200% civil line booster giving us a whopping uh, 245,000 civil lines, 10,000 RP, which would be more if you would actually research anything, and survivor and heavy metal hero, that's a fantastic combination in addition to also the camouflage that we unlocked. So I think that this was a worthy battle for my eight years of War Thunder account anniversary. I hope you have also some amazing stories and uh, memories throughout the years. Let me know in the comment section down below. Please give this video a like with it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And we will see each other as usual on the ways in the skies and on the battlefields of War Thunder.